I'm gonna give you a story here. Um, what happened in Salao, Mexico? Because I'm hearing something very similar uh, coming up. So there's something different about this contract negotiation that's never happened in, in UAW history. In every negotiation prior to this negotiation, um, and it's even stated in the, in the Labor Relations Act that, that the company, the union, will uh, agree or just continue on um, the old agreement until until they can agree to a settlement, okay? Um, but there's also some new stipulations in there that I just seen. Uh, it's not in your contract book. You're not gonna find your contract. You have to know labor law. So, but, but I wanna give you a scenario. In Salao, Mexico, this is what happened. Salao, Mexico, they were negotiating. The CMT was negotiating an agreement with the, the uh, I believe it, it's General Motors. And they came to an impasse. They couldn't, they couldn't come to terms and the workers struck. When the workers of Slough went on strike, they held the line. The, the members held the line. And they were basically like this, you know what I mean? We're, we're not going back, right? I don't know if they were pushing back against the company and the union, um, or if they were, uh, if the union was, but I don't have that details if the union was actually sanctioning their strike. But, but what I do know is that unbeknownst to the members at the location, Mexican labor law had a provision within it that stated after, uh, without extending a contract, if uh, workers were on strike more than three months, then that nullifies the contract. That means anything that they had earned and gains up until that point, for years of bargaining and, and, and many times they've been through negotiations, all of those contract provisions, all those terms were, were done. That the company wasn't legally held to any of them. And so what happened was General Motors called them back to work. But they only called 600, 600 people back to work to restart that facility. And all the rest of the 3,000 workers sat at home. They didn't get called back. They just... Not they don't work at GM anymore. Um, so I, I think that the the appropriate response would have been at that point is you're not going to honor our old contract or you're not going to come to the table. I just stay out on strike. I'd have walked right back out the plant. That would have been the right way to do it, but they didn't. They stayed. So so apparently the 600 that did call back were probably the team leaders and uh, the the ones that thought that they were going to progress by selling out their brothers and sisters. Um, now. Where this becomes important is uh, the, 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 the labor law that I just pulled uh, from the National Labor Relations Act. It cites this language about working without a, an extension. Then there's no reason that they don't have to because in 19, they worked on an ex extension. They extended the contract and then they went on a strike. Well, the contract still extended at, time, at that time on, upon mutual agreement. The fact that the UAW is not going to agree to an extension and at least work one day on it means that if there's a break in service, the, the agreement hasn't been extended. Now this law, this, this rule from the NLRB will apply to this contract negotiations. And what it says is that if the company and the union have not agreed to an extension, contract has not been extended they haven't worked on an extension that at that point once they've reached you know whatever I, there's no I can't find the limits I'm looking for the limits to see how long you can be out but it but it essentially states that uh, whatever the terms are your uh, no lockout uh, no strike provision whatever that is in, in your contract that's expired which is expired so it shouldn't fucking apply anyway Anything that's expired is expired. So even stri striking language is expired. Um, but but the law says that that language would apply. Um, so 
whatever's in the, in, in, and it also says either the, the strike and lockout provision or through arbitration. Now, I don't know who their arbitrator is. I don't know what, what the process is for that. I might have to keep digging. But what I'm stating is, you know, striking without extension is actually putting the members at risk. The smart thing to do is extend the contract, even if you only worked on it one day before you go out on strike. Because now you're putting yourself at the mercy of an arbitrator. And who's in control of the arbitrator? Is it the company? Is it, is it unbiased? Is it an unbiased person that's possibly getting slipped money by the corporations? You know, I mean, do you trust a third party to come in here? You've got, you've got lots of third, third parties that are involved in you guys' contract negotiations right now. And uh, they're not really done anything for the worker. It's definitely beneficial to, to the companies. So just think it out, it's food for thought. You need to, need to, need to know the National Labor Relations Board, you know, Google the question, what happens if a contract if a contract expires and you time it out without without mutual agreement upon ex extending it? It's the, like the fourth time I've, Jim Mattis was talking about it on the radio show, as if he was baiting people to do that. Well, Jim Jim's not a good dude. He's not looking out for you. So you, so you need to need to read a little bit. You know, when other people are saying these, you know, acting tough and poking your chest out. You know, yeah, we're gonna do this got to know the law because it, you're going to be bound to it and it's going to apply to you whether you know it or you don't and there are people that do know